Thank you. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge George C. Ferris presiding. Let's proceed with the next witness. Just before we proceed, I just wanted to ask a housekeeping matter. If the witness has testified, um, can they sit in after they testify? Unless they're subject to being recalled. Yeah, they're not going to recall them. Okay, we're not going to recall them. Okay. Okay. And they can stay in. We're waiting in which Madam Stan be sworn. Rachel. Rachel Renham, swear a firm testimony you're about to give two old truths and other one truths that I've got. State's name for court, ma'am, out loud. Arlene Calvin. Good afternoon. Ms. Colvin, could you um again state your full name for the record? My name is Arlene Colvin. And Ms. Colvin, what is your um uh, how are you employed? I work for the city of Gary, Indiana. In what capacity? I am the community development director. What's your background? Um, I was previously at, at the same uh, employer, the chief of staff, for about 15 years. Chief operating officer before that. I am an attorney by profession. What are your duties as a director of community development? Um, my department is responsible for administering the funding that comes from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, we fund uh, various social service programs as well as most of the housing activities in the city. Um, many of the social service uh, activities that we fund uh, relate specifically to low to moderate income persons. So. As the director of those programs uh, and the administrator of those programs, then you're familiar with the poverty rate for the citizens in the city of Erie. Yes, I am. What is it? Uh, nearly 40%. Uh, specifically, it's about 36 point something percent. That's the poverty rate in, in the city of Erie. And those are, that, that, may, that represents people who are below the poverty rate? And or under. And or under the poverty rate. Yes. said approximately 36. Right. About how many people are in the city of Gary? Uh, approximately 80,500. So that poverty rate represents about 28,000 people a little bit more. Are you familiar with the, um, the, the, the Title IV D court? Yes, I am. How are you familiar with that court? Um, a number of the individuals that are funded by various programs uh, in my department uh, have had dealings with that particular court. Um, we have various kinds of programs that we fund. We fund uh, um, programs for those persons who are uh, homeless or nearly homeless. They call them rapid rehousing programs. Many of those individuals uh, have contact with the court system. Various other social agencies that we fund, they, they have contact with those. With the, with the court. What would be the effect, if any, on the um, Citizens of Gary moving that court from Gary to um, Crown Point. Jeff, your honor, speculation. Uh, your honor, she just testified that she is familiar with the economic status of. You need a little better foundation. What's your lane? Yeah. Um, can you um, can you tell us <clears throat> what exactly um, are it, it would be the access of citizens? Um, to move to move around the county with the population that my particular program serves. Yes, most of them uh, do not have uh, transportation of their own. Uh, most of them rely upon public transportation. Um, most of them uh, specifically use Gary Public Transportation Corporation as their primary uh, means of transportation or access throughout the county. And do most of, do, do do many of them receive any type of public assistance? Most of the well, the population that my program serves are persons who are at or under the poverty level. So yes, most of those people receive public assistance. And you indicated that um, that many of them utilize the. Um, the, the bus trans transit yes. system. Yes. Is 
So what? Uh, so would that have any effect, or, or it, would there be any effect for citizens for the citizens period and who you, who use your services under your program? with that court movie to Crown Point have? Yes, there would. Uh, those individuals, many of the individuals that are served by the programs that I administer in my department um, are for people who actually uh, walk a lot. They don't have their own transportation. So if those individuals now had to go to Crown Point, they'd be forced to, or they would have to, I should say, uh, use public transportation to get there. Uh, Gary Public Transportation has a hourly service, I think, or something along those lines. It's not a very frequent service to Crown Point, so those individuals would be uh, required to utilize those services, utilize their dollars if they had any, uh, to actually uh, obtain um, the pay the transportation costs. As I uh, recall, uh, and Gary Public Transportation was one of those agencies that I at one point did uh, administer as well. Uh, transportation costs for, from the Metro Center to Crown Point for about uh, $4.50 round trip. And from wherever you're going to, to the Metro Center where you would pick up that service, it's about $1.60. So essentially it's about an $8 cost, maybe a little bit more depending upon where you were traveling from the city. And that $8 cost would be paid for or would uh, impact the, the actual dollars that an individual uh, who actually uh, uh, is serviced by my program, that's a cost that they don't have. The actual dollars for a person who's at the poverty level is about $11,000 for one family. Um, a family of how many? For one. A family of one. One person? Yes. And since you, you, you administer like pretty much almost everything that's, that, that, that's going on in the city, um, when, when, when people attend those courts, are they attending them by themselves or are they, you know, they bringing? Objection okay. speculation, Your Honor. Sustained. Uh, you've had an opportunity to uh, observe people utilizing that court? Yes, I have. And when you have observed them utilizing that court, have they just been there themselves by themselves? Very frequently, no. Who else usually attends court with them? Uh, sometimes people bring their children. Uh, sometimes they, usually there are three or four people with them. So if you multiply that cost, that's thirty dollars. Are you familiar with any program that they can tap into that would pay for their transportation costs? I'm not aware of it. Thank you. Hello, cross examination. Just very briefly, Your Honor. I just have a few very brief questions. You referenced the Gary Public Transportation System. Yes. Isn't it true that there are reduced rates for those people who are Medicare or Medicaid eligible to ride the bus? There are re reduced rates for certain categories of people. And the Metro Center you referenced, that's across the street from the courthouse in Gary, correct? Yes. And the line that you referenced that comes to Crown Point, that you said comes every hour or so, that drops off uh, just right across the street from this building, does it not? Yes. And is it uh, not also true that there are certain non-for-profit groups which offer free public transportation for people to make their court appearances? From not, with, as far as I know or what I'm familiar with, I'm not familiar with. Further? Redirect. <clears throat> yeah, just, 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 just a couple of points. If is there is there a cost associated with getting a transfer? Yes. So if I or if a, if a person has to take one bus to get down to the metro center to make to transfer to the bus that goes to Crown Point, they have to not then incur a second cost. Yes. Um, where they would only have the cost of getting to the Metro Center, which is where the court is across the street currently. So it, it is an increase in the cost. There it was. Thank you. Oh, In 
there any costs associated with them walking across the street from the Metro Center to the courthouse? No. Okay, thank you. No follow-up, Your Honor. Ma'am, you may step down. Thank you. Ms. Walker, um, how are you employed? Um, through the city of Gary, the Gary Commission for Women, the director of the Rainbow Better Women's Shelter. Your Honor, if we, uh, she doesn't appear on the witness list. Your Honor, I believe that, that, that it was sent about the same time that that um, motion to continue was sent. I think they probably crossed in the email right around the 11th or something. Yeah, I knew yesterday. So um, we don't have to provide a witness list for this hearing court. Not a court. No, it's, it's, not, it's, not condo, it's not provided for by the rules. We were only providing a witness as a curse. 